This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Update 40 is out. And with it comes a new spooky hero, Corvus, for the holiday season. Yes, this hero was originally planned for Halloween release, but you'll know the reason why it's delayed in a second. Anyways, what else there is? A new map editor updates with new props, a new expert map glacial trail, as well as a, a new boss challenge feature. So we can test bosses during their damn time. On top of that, new quests, new achievements, and of course, balance changes and all that good stuff. So first things first, I should mention that Corvus is a little bit more expensive than your usual hero. Usually it costs 5k, but this one's 7k. That's because he is a very, very complicated hero. Lots of things going on with him, hence why the increased uh, monkey money cost. So uh, let's get it. There it is, and it's Mighty Glory along with its spirit, which is doing like an XD kind of face. <laughs> Interesting. Before we jump into that, I guess we can check out the new achievements, of which apparently I've already gotten two of them. A life experience... Earn 5.36 million experience for any tower. I believe that's 2 to the spawn it, uh, 16? No, I think the reference there is actually, if you have $1 and you double it every day for 30 days, that's the uh, number you end up getting. I found that from Reddit, or I heard that from Reddit, sounds about accurate. On top of that, we 100 community challenges already from playing challenge browsers, so thankfully they count, they predate those. Thank you, Ninja Kiwi. And then you can see two more Neo achievements here. Invest at least 400k when creating a Paragon, and also 25 to life. Defeat two, five unique bosses at tier 5, basically just beating all of them. So how does one activate an event? Ah, okay, you just click here, and the entire UI is changed. Interesting. So here you click for the standard challenge, here you click for the advanced, and then this is the co-op challenge. Nice. This UI was much unique considering there were so many events going on. Let's just see real quick though, yeah. So that's cool, they tell you when the next boss event is, and then you can pretty much choose any map of your choosing, including Blondes, yes. On top of that, battle mode, you can practice, I guess, your score for fastest time, least cash, least tears. Oh boy. The possibilities are endless. Stay tuned for that, maybe soon in the future. And let's go ahead and check out that new map, Glacial Trail. I'm just gonna jump into a quick hard map to see how it looks like, what the true difficulty is. From what I heard in the trailer, it looks like it's just one lane, and indeed it is. I'm not sure what exactly uh, classifies it as expert, because that... One lane is pretty long, but I guess we'll find out. Now, Ninja Kiwi also added a new quest as updates so that you can understand how to use Corvus. Discover Corvus's strengths and abilities. Uh, I will have you know that I actually ran through this quest already a little bit, but I didn't like how it showcased here, as in it skipped a lot of its levels and spells. But I'll go through it through it with you anyway. So Corvus is Spirit Walker. There's long history to the spellbook through which he channels power. To a spirit companion, the spirit targets and attacks balloons anywhere on the map at Corvus's command. And what Corvus does, he haunts a single balloon at a time in its radius. And then when that balloon is popped, it explodes, giving an influx of mana to the mana pool based on how many layers the balloon had. He's best place where you can see lots of balloons to hunt. Requires a steady stream of mana to keep casting spells. So even though the spirit has full more range, it's a good idea to place Corvus near the front. Understandable. And here you can see, watch Corvus very carefully. He haunted that blue balloon, and I think we gained how much mana? Well, we'll take a look at the screen here. We had 20 mana before, and after we pop it entirely, we get 35. So it looks like it's pretty much uh, 5 mana per layer, which means I think it's a good idea to put Corvus here on strong. And while we're here, I guess I should mention that Corvus kind of takes a little bit of Geraldo's homework. This menu sure seems familiar, doesn't it? We'll get to all that in a second, but for now... Let's just see how much mana we can rack up to end off uh, round one here. 95. So while there's lots of different spells with the unique functions, there are really two different types of spells. The four spells kept at the top cost mana to cast, but also drain mana over time. You can cast and dismiss them as they wish, but be very careful because they consume a lot of mana. And then the rest are cast with a one-time mana cost and don't drain mana over time. Each have their own duration before they go into cooldown, and a Patch wants us to cast Repel to clean up the balloons. And which one is Repel? This one over here. So as she said, the first four are ones that aren't a one-time use. Also, crap. I think Strong also messes up the Spirit. So maybe we'll just leave on first for now, but you saw that. Look at what Repel is doing. It's knocking back a lot of the stuff. He gains a Force Field, pushing a lot of balloons back. Even with that, uh, he's kind of leaking. All right then. Whatever, good enough. So, with all that, spellcasting, it's easy to run out of mana. Corvus is level 3 ability. Soul Harvest pops balloons in his range. 
Replenishing mana in an instant. Make sure to use it when there's lots of balloons near Corvus, and maybe try the Spear Spell to uh, help get through the round. So I should wait for stronger or higher level balloons, right? Like here? Let's see it. 75 mana? All the way to 225. Looks like we didn't get all of them, all the balloons popped, but uh, okay. Definitely need Spear here, so let's cast it. And I see you can dismiss it whenever you want to, uh, well, stop draining mana. Looks like it's draining. Uh, well, it looks it's not it's not completely drained out yet, so I guess we'll let it keep going. And this is what I was talking about. The tutorial just gives you all these spells all at once, which I think is over sensory overload. So I think I'll uh, do my best to go through them one by one methodically, so that we don't you know just skim over each of the each of the uh, spells and not figure out what everything has to offer with it. Anyways, that's everything I written down. Remember, he mentioned his ability to cast multiple spells at once, but he didn't expand on it. So, maybe try casting some at the same time. Alrighty then, we will do so. But first I need to read what the hell they do. So, I guess I'll just read Aggression, the other uh, drain mana over time skill. Spear grows in size and attacks faster. How about Malevolence here? The spear merges with the spellbook and releases an intense balloon-popping mist around Corp. Seems like they're pretty much all damage, but... A different type of damage. Storm looks like it unleashes an onslaught of energy blades. Gotcha, gotcha. Looks like our spell book is full of mana now. Should we use it? I think we should. Okay, which one's the one that sees camo? Uh, I'm gonna... Uh, it's right here, right here. Vision. 170. So temporary let the spirit see camo. And they remove from everything it hits. Damn. That's a, l a large price to pay just for camo protection, but alright then. Uh, here are more camo rainbows. Wait, are we dead? Uh, crap. There is no... The ability here. It's still on cooldown. Well... I can retry last round, can't I? Okay, let's test the following. I'm gonna try these spells here to see if any of them see camo or nah. Nope, nope. Nothing. Oh! Soul Barrier. I'll use it. Ah, that's very cool. We just create a barrier of like over 300 lives. And now we don't have to worry about. And uh, let's use... Do I need to use anything to beat the Rams here? I think we're good. We'll just keep on gaining mana. Oh, so what's the purple popping here? Let me test all these random casts. Nope. None of those three seem to work at all. While this is awkward, I can tell you that these two abilities don't, don't actually beat purples. I will leave it at that for now. Oh, there we go. Trample, trample. It's kind of like a Sada ability, isn't it? Interesting. Here comes a Moab. Uh, what should I do? Aggression, how about? Turn it angry, boy. Remember, we can do multiple at once, so I'll do that. Oh, wait, it didn't seem to work. Uh, here's Spear. There it is, there it is. Spear and Aggression seems to work together. I see. Let's dismiss just Aggression for now. We should be able to keep up the uh, mana pool, right? Just with one spell active? I think so. Well, <laughs> GG. Again, I think this quest could have done with a little bit more work. I feel like I was left on my own after round four here. Anyways, now we're gonna jump back into a dark path here to relearn Corvus. One spell at a time. So first things first, I did not cover the nourishment, the bottom left one that we had like since the start. Looks like the cost of it is pretty much whatever the mana pool is. Sacrifices all your mana, converts it to your XP, which sounds great, especially when the spirit is good enough to survive. So we should go ahead and do it, right? Let me just see what the ratio is. Let me actually pause the round so we can see exactly. So we have 105 mana, and it costs 1k to upgrade to the next level. Let's use... Oh, I can't. I have to use it in the middle of the round. All right, now... And now it's down to 856. Not a whole lot, but that's understandable. It's like a 2 to 1 ratio. I mean, all I can say is it's better than nothing. Looks like at level 4, the spirit does more damage, and also learns... a. Two new spells, Soul Barrier and Trample. Come on, I haven't even gone through these other spells yet, but that's alright. So we kind of already saw Repel and Spear, haven't we? So let's move on to the next one, Echo. This one's very expensive. At 300 mana, the Spirit splits into two. Command sent to one or sent to both. And the Echo always targets first. Well, for science, everybody, I would use it this round, but I don't have the mana. But I'll use this, and let's cast it. Remember, it's not one time. So there it is, you have two of the little XD Spirit Balls. I don't know about you, but I like calling it that. Because that's what it is. And it actually shows you how long it's active for. I see, I see. 
But all right, it looks like we now have level five. We have learned three new spells. I'm just gonna keep on, uh, you know, using mana for XP because uh, the spirit seems good enough on its own. Moving on, you kind of already saw aggression, but I'll uh, show it again. Just because it's kind of funny. So if you want to look at how much it drains, it's like five mana constantly, it seems. Yep. Luckily, I think right now we're out gaining the mana that we're draining, which is great. Also, we have no camo, but that's okay. That's what the vision is for here. Now we have level six, which increases damage when haunted balloons explode. The spirit itself does more damage, hence why he's still able to solo. 25 here. Okay, time to look at this spell, Haste. The spirit movement and turning speed are greatly increased. Uh, is this going to be the faster darts of uh, of heroes? Because just based on the description, it, it kind of sounds like it. Unless, unless it provides something that's more than, well, whatever is mentioned here. Also, leads. Do we have lead popping? Uh, how about aggression? No, a spear. Ah, yes, lightning. Just copying the 200 druid tone work. Nothing. Nothing to see here. Looks like the spear drains twice as much as the, uh, the, what do you call it, the bigger aggression. I see 10 tick. So, by the way, if you cast and dismiss constantly, that's a bad idea. They specifically, like, want you to not do that, because you see, just, just very bad usage. Mana usage, if you want to do that. We also unlock level 7, which is an ability, Spirit Walk. Corvus can shift to a valid location. I'm just going to tank all this purpose, by the way. I don't care enough. But yeah, I don't think I want to move Corvus right now, just because, as they say, as the Toro said, the front is the best way. I really don't want to keep spending 170 mana for these camo, so I will probably get some sort of decam in the future. But for now, more mana drain. Let's, let's just sacrifice all 500 here. I don't think 34 is too difficult. I think we ought to showcase Malevolent here. Basically, the spirit merges with the spellbook and releases an intense blue bombing mist around Corvus. Which is probably a bad idea because I am not in the right spot. Okay, do not do that. Oh, that was bad. Alright, let's make him angry. Is angry enough? Nope, we'll need to cast Spear as well. To clean this up. So, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea to use a Malevolence at all, like, for now. We'll dismiss the Spear. And then we can handle. We also have Camo now, so we don't have to worry about spending the mana for that. We'll harvest all those balloons there, nice. For a fat amount of mana. Definitely want to use it during a big balloon clump, that's for sure. Let's see, do I just tank all the pinks here? I suppose I will. It makes I can see why aggression is like half the cost. It's not very strong. In that case, maybe this might be useful. Frostbound freezes balloons at hits for a short time. For a cost of 170. I'll definitely use it this round for any, any trouble. Actually, before that, uh, let's soul harvest these lights here and use it now. Okay, it doesn't work unless I cast Spear to Pop Leads. Okay, dismiss aggression. Well, also, when there's ice, there's fire. Ember, the spirit leaves a fire droplet on the track every few seconds that burns balloons going through them. Sounds fun. It also seemed like the 10 mana per second was draining us a fair bit, so I will just uh, use it for a burst, even though it costs us a lot of mana. That's okay. We have a good 426 going to round 40. I'm going to dismiss spirit because I don't think it's good single target. I would probably want to go for Echo, right? I also kind of want to go for the Ember, though. But I think the Echo is the way to go. Let's do it. So cast this. I have 160 mana left. To do what? Well, not much. I'll just miss the Spear. Oh, wow, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. Shall we use the Soul Barrier? 16 lives, because I didn't have a lot of mana. I am not going to be able to beat this. Alright, should have saved some money. Level 8 is $11. Do we buy it? I think it's worth it. Uh, what did it even give? It looks like it just... Haste gives increased speed and agility. Mana pool feels faster, which will not help this round. Also learn Storm. And Storm is here. Unleashes an Onslaught of Energy Blades. I think this is probably what we need to do. I don't have mana for this, but... Oh no, this is definitely it. Oh my god, look at those... Look at those darts everywhere. That's nuts. Can we also retarget... To retarget the Spirit Walker? Or are we good? Nah. Holy, that's OP, though. That is why it looks like it, it, it's a 15 tick. Holy. We've got Operation Dartstorm at home, guys. Alright, we could use some help on the Spirit at base. Then, How about Jungle Drums? I assume that it affects its attack speed. Can you also outbluff Corvus? 
you can. Did that actually increase the damage? I think I, I think I did see sell the alchemist. I don't think it was actually. It's still doing like popping the zebras to uh, yellow. So I don't think it actually affects the uh, the spirit. Although again, if someone else testing. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. We also have a full mana book, so I feel like I should try to use the Ember that I want to try. Let's cast it. And let's see what happens. Well, it's dropping fire like I expected. Wall of fire, guys. This th this tower is pretty much just a bunch of existing towers. <laughs> All encompassed in one little green guy. Okay, so I know Soul Bearer always has 40 mana, but how much lives, like, does it matter how full the the mana pool is. I'm gonna just use it. Oh, it looks like it... 400, yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? Because remember, I used it the other time, and it was very bad. But 400 sounds nutty when it only costs 40. I guess that's where the mana management comes in handy. We'll use Storm here. God, it's so OP. I'm gonna keep it for 47, too, because 47 is known to be hard round. You know what? We'll use Haste, too. Uh, do you guys think it's shooting any faster than before? It's hard for me to say. I don't think it is, though. Alright, we haven't seen this ability yet. Ancestral Might. The spirit merges with the spellbook, channeling the hand of the Ancient One to do massive damage. We need it. I've used it. And what's going on here? Looks like the spirit is gone. And we have gained... Uh, well, that's the Ancest Ancestral Might, guys. It's just stomping on the balloons. It's actually leaking stuff. <laughs> SMH my head. I will absolutely harvest the Serams this round. Bam. I probably should have sat, like, siphoned some XP first. Oh, well. Here's Storm. Here is... Can we use Tramp Pull at the same time as Storm? Uh, you can. Ah. <laughs> Guys, there are so many interactions with Corvus. It's crazy. This will probably be my longest update video yet because of the amount of things that Corvus has going on. It's insane. It's... Unload Storm. Let's also see what level 9 has. The Spirit's base damage is increased and does extra damage to Moabs. Frostbound hits Moabs. Oh, okay. Let's use it. Let's use it. Right here. How long does it freeze the Molt for? Pretty much the entire time, I would assume. Time to cast Storm here. Holy crap, we have $20,000. Okay, let's use a Soul Harvest here. Oh my god, we just got max mana. That's nutty. Okay, what do we do with it? I also just realized I'm going to do the following Echo. Let's create two, and then... Uh, let's do Trample. Ah, do you, do you see that, guys? The second one goes from the opposite lane. Remember, guys, with Echo, command sent to one or sent to both. So that is a pretty nutty interaction. Which just, again, like... Doubles, or even more, more, more than doubles, the... I don't know, possible interactions you can have with this... This hero. With that said, though, uh, this is probably a good time to mention that... Future heroes will probably not be as complex as this. This is probably... I feel like we say this every time a new hero or paragon comes up, but this is actually the most complex hero to date. For real. Because Geraldo is just items, but... That, for the most part, don't interact with each other. But this one has the same amount of items, but with interactions. So let's see here. I'll use Echo again. And I'm gonna use Storm. I think it works on both, right? I believe so. I believe so. We'll use the most of the time to just stack it with everything. I want to see all of what this has to offer. Let's drop Ember on both of them, too. Aggression, too. Yeah, make both of them angry. Two angry red balls here. Speaking of which, level 10 is a dark ritual ability. Harvest a huge number of balloons near Corvus. Trample does more damage to more balloons, and then learns recovery. A spell that we have not seen yet. But let us read here. All spells are stopped. All attacks are paused. And Corvus of the Spirit goes into a deep meditation. To replenish spells at a rapid rate. So basically, you just cool down reduction. Let me try it then. So... I'll again do Echo. I need more mana, so I'll make it full. I'll do Frostbound, so they both freeze things. I'll do Repel too, because I feel like it. What else do we do? Uh, Ancestral Might. What happens? Oh, that was dumb. It's okay, we can Dark Shift. Oh yeah, there we go. And, uh, wait, can I Recovery to get the cooldown back? Cast. It goes to a deep meditation to replenish spells at a rapid rate. Like, I I'm seeing the cooldowns aren't much faster than before, so I'm not sure what's going on there. 
Let's try this again for round 60. So I'm gonna cast recovery. Okay, it actually it definitely does. I'm seeing I'm seeing the uh, uh, bar of uh, this one nourishment. It definitely is faster. So that is true. It just didn't look very fast to me. That's okay though. So let me do the following. I'm gonna dark shift. I want to see how much if we get mana. So I'm gonna put it down to zero. I'm gonna harvest for 240. So it still gives you mana. And then now it's a good time to use uh, level 10, right? Harvest huge number of balloons. Well, there's not much, but looks like our mana pool goes up while the BFB is in range. I assume it'd be much higher had we had more than just a couple. All right. I'm going to frostbound this. It does not work on BFBs. Only involves for the moment. We also got level 11 in the meantime. Spiritual attunement means the spirit grows in power as the mana pool fills. I see. So you definitely want 800, 800 if you just... Want to do some damage? Uh, I'll take a look at 63 here. How well does the spirit pop stuff? Well, it takes off the scrambler cleanly, but that's all I can say with it. Again, not not very strong. Also, it still can't pop lead or purple. Hence why we're gonna need to cast embers here. Okay, more balloons this round. I'm going to try a combo here. I might use the level 10 ability. See how quickly we can replenish mana. Waiting for a lot of balloons to pop. Like how about now? Oh boy, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> All the way up to 100, or 800, just like that. I haven't really used a Malevolence much since the beginning, but I'll show you again here. Basically, the Spirit goes back to where Corvus is. And that's why it's shooting, the Storm is shooting out from Corvus. <laughs> Reuse it. It feel, definitely feels like the hero that, if you're gonna get, you have to, you have to micro it. Not really one of those heroes you can just AFK with, unfortunately. So let me just see, I have enough of my Orphok now, I'm just seeing if it affects the spirit hard to really say there i want to say no we also have level 12 by the way it says repel can push back moabs which means uh, i will get more uh, repel still doesn't work on bfps though so we have to find something to beat that layer down all right bfp is a good test to see here so it takes about 14 every uh, that often yep it does not affect confirmed does not affect it all right it's also at level 13 where we finally learned the last ability here overload and uh, it's the most expensive one for a reason. 520. The spirit detonates with overwhelming energy. A moment later, the spirit rebuilds from the wispy remnants. Now. It exploded. And what am I seeing? A moment later, the spirit rebuilds. So after it times out, there it is. I think it's just a nuke, guys. It was obviously a bad time to use because it, it was only a ceramics. But I'd assume that's what the, that's what the high price point is for. A very OP nuke. So I'm going to recover. I'd like that cooldown up again, please and thanks. So let's target it back on strong for the BFBs. And let's use it again. Well, it just destroyed the entire BFB layer. That's not bad. I'm not sure if I expected more. Maybe the ability for it to like soak through a layer. But I see. Small glimpse of the power there. Also, I'm using called arms. I feel like it's not actually getting better. So maybe it doesn't. It doesn't work like that, either. If that's the case, I might be a little concerned of Corvus's power. <laughs> because usually heroes get... get good when they have things... Uh, like, if they're able to be buffed, essentially. Well, I'm always looking for more. So, I guess we need to see the true power of the Overload ability. So, what I'm going to do is there's not enough mana to Echo and Overload. So, what we have to do is you have to use Nourishment in between it. So, let's cast it. Let's... Oh, wait, sorry. Not not Nourishment. Sorry. Use the Harvester. My bad. My bad. And then Overload. Two of them break down the entire ZMG layer. I'm not sure if one of them was enough to do that, but we will... We'll see past round 80 then. All right. We'll go ahead and use a Mana Repulsion for all these BFPs here. And how do we end this off? I will... Uh, yeah, we lost our Echo, sadly. I'll do that for the Moabs. In fact, I'll use all these. And Storm, frick it. We'll harvest two for max. Because remember, that does damage. And uh, Spear for Chain Lightning. Didn't beat Solo, but <laughs> luckily those Spike Factories came in clutch onwards. I'm noticing right now that if there are no balloons on screen at all, Corvus can't harvest, like, the normal the normal mobs for, for power, for mana. That's kind of sad, but that's okay. I guess that's when you want to move him over here. Part of me wishes the main base spear was just a little bit stronger, so that... So he didn't, again, have to keep using abilities every single round here. We'll take a look at what level 16 has. 
Uh, increased range, Spirit does more damage. Okay, I'll just go ahead and get it. I needed it. And then for level 17, Haunted Blooms are weaker and the explosions do more damage. Soulbeer can block more Blooms from leaking. And I have so much money that I'm just gonna waste the money on that. And I am curious with this much mana. Actually, let's harvest a little bit more first before using it. We can tank up to 760, alright. I'd say this is a good time to maybe try one Overload to see if that's enough to break down the ZMG layer. Or if Echo is needed. Uh, Echo is definitely needed. And I'm probably not using him to 100% effective because it is my uh, first first game of this, but it takes a lot to have him survive all this, all, all these Dense Bloons on his own. He's gonna need some help. So level 18 is nice. Storm's Blade uh, does more damage, so does Spear. I like Storm, so I'm gonna keep it keep it active. How much damage is it really doing? Well, it is definitely getting outscaled, I feel like. And how about 19? Ah, oh, there we go. This is what we need. Corvus can haunt more class balloons. Trample does more damage to balloons. I definitely would like uh, an Echo. And uh, can I gain 12 mana somewhere? Yes. After I use this. Overload. Nice. I love that combo, guys. What more can I say? How is Ember and Frostbound doing for us? Late game, by the way. Any good? Uh, not really, it seems. At least the fire feels like it's outscaled. Now for level 20, last bit, last uh, level. The spirit base damage increases, and now does extra damage to more. It's much needed. Thank you. Ancestral Might does more damage, so does Overload. I am curious how Ancestral Might does. I haven't used that in a while, so Harvest. Echo. Use it now for double the amount of thingies. Uh, I, I don't know. It's all right. All right, time for another Echo, Harvest, and Overload combo. Hey, now it actually is strong enough to take it all the way down to uh, Moabs. That's an improvement. Okay, 96 years is a good warm bar, warm bar round for what I want to do. Well, first off, I think I want to try Echoing and Trampling. Sounds like a fun combo, especially with all these mobs here, so let's get two of them to run through. Uh, they actually didn't break the F mob layer. Yikes, yikes. All right, let's gain some mana. Let's Ancestral Might this to death. Come on. It's probably... It's actually a pretty good combo with Perma Spike, considering, uh, you know, this thing... I think this cleans up with Sprams nice and easily. It also was able to damage ZMGs from a very big range. Good mult damage, I see. Just really bad against the Sprams. Now the moment y'all have been waiting for. How much of 98 can we nuke with level 20 Corpus? Well, first things first. I think I have to... Yep, definitely Echo. Definitely I have to Harvest. Use this last, the Overload last, by the way, because it deletes them. So I'll keep this going, and I will use this thing, and now I'll Overload. Uh, that was actually a bit underwhelming, I'm not gonna lie. I hope we survive this. If not, I will be sad. Come on, Perma Spike. You're good for a reason, nice. Okay, and now we need some good bad damage, so that would probably be an Echo plus Storm combo. Yeah, Echo, uh, Aggression 2, Aggression 2, and this. Ember 2, or nah, nah. Let me harvest this bad here for 200 mana, that's not a whole lot. Yeah, single, oh my god, this thing is so bad against single targets. Actually, maybe I should recovery and then try the Overload Echo combo, but unfortunately, the cooldown won't be there, nor will the mana, because I only have a single target. <laughs> well, okay, Perma Spike, it's all on you then. What can this thing do? I don't know. Frost? Frost, haste. Probably haste wasn't very needed, but yeah, frost was definitely good. Great utility. G, G. And this is why Sandbox is useful. I just noticed that um, the spirit leaves whatever hands, green hands on the bad. Interesting. Okay. So Echo, Harvest, Overload. And that did about half of the bad's damage. Not too shabby. I feel like Corvus is the hero can do it all, but you have to use, like, you have to know when to use the abilities, right? High skill cap hero by far. Hope you found this um, showcase informative, and if, if there's any special interaction that I missed, then let me know. Try to cover as much as I could here. And of course, stay tuned for more of the 40 point update, because there's well, way more than just Corvus. So make sure to subscribe, follow my stream as well. I'll probably be live soon. Also my second channel, in case there's something else. Other bonus content. Goodbye.